what happens when you type google.com and hit enter. This all happens in less than a second, which makes it one of the most asked interview questions during the technical interview rounds. I will discuss six crucial computer networking terms that should be understood before addressing this question. In case you are aware of these six terms, then please jump to the second part of this video, where I will provide a straightforward explanation with a diagram to answer this question during the interview. Let's start. Number one, what is server? A server is a computer that is connected to the internet. From our personal computers, we make requests for certain resources like databases, websites, and other services to a server. This server hosts these resources and responds to our requests. Since this server serves our requests, it is called a server. For example, wikipedia.com is a website hosted on a server. Now, if you type wikipedia.com in the browser, then your computer will request the server for the website and the server will give you the website as a response to your request. There are many types of servers. A server that hosts databases is called a database server. A server that hosts websites is called a web server. A server that hosts applications is called an application server. Number two, what is an IP address? IP address is a unique number assigned to every device connected over the internet. It helps to identify the device over the internet. The device can be your computer, servers, routers, and more. Everything which is connected over the internet has an IP address. As I mentioned before, that if you type wikipedia.com in the browser, then your computer will request the server for the website, and the server will give you the website as a response to your request. You must be wondering, which server? As on typing wikipedia.com, how your computer knows which server it should approach as there are many servers and every server doesn't have a Wikipedia website. So to do that, we need to map wikipedia.com to the IP address of the server where the website is hosted and this mapping we store at DNS server. More on DNS server in a minute. So on typing wikipedia.com, we get the IP address from the DNS server and with the help of the IP address, we can identify the server and get the website. Number three, what is DNS server? It is also called the phone book of the internet. Whenever you type any website name, then your browser wants to know where it can find the website. The DNS server helps finding the website. DNS server has the mapping of the website with the IP address of the server that hosts the website. So when you enter wikipedia.com or google.com, the DNS server returns the corresponding IP address of the server hosting the website. As you have the IP address of the server, your browser can make the connection with that server and get the website. Number four, what is TCP? Transmission control protocol is a way to deliver data or content from one device to another over the internet. TCP makes sure that complete data should be delivered. TCP divides the whole data into chunks, that is small packets of data, and sends each packet one by one. It sends one packet and then takes the acknowledgement of successful delivery from the receiver end. If a packet is not delivered, then it will resend the packet. It sends the next packet after the successful delivery of the previous packet. It never drops any packet, so no data loss. As it confirms the delivery of each packet before sending the next packet, it is slow. TCP is used in getting static websites or sending emails or downloading files from the internet. You must have noticed while downloading that if the internet connection drops, then as soon as the connection gets restored, you don't need to start downloading again. It resumes downloading as the server knows how many data packets are successfully sent and how many are remaining. Number five, what is UDP? User datagram protocol is also a way to communicate or deliver data. UDP is used for real-time services or applications like online gaming, video call, broadcasting, and more. If the internet connection suddenly cuts off while you are watching a live cricket match and later restores, it won't resume from the point you left off. Instead, it will discard all the lost data and broadcast the current happenings in the match. So UDP allows packets to be dropped instead of sending delayed packets. If we wait for the acknowledgement of each packet like TCP while covering real-time events, then it causes a delay. It won't be pleasant for you if you are having a video call with your loved ones and they can hear what you just said after a delay. In short, UDP doesn't wait for the acknowledgement of an earlier packet sent. It keeps sending data packets one after the other and if any packet doesn't receive by the client due to any issue, maybe poor internet, then it will not resend. It makes UDP fast and we use it in those applications where real-time experience matters more over data loss. Number six, 
what are http request and http response http request is a message sent by the client to the server to perform an action for example let's say you want to update your date of birth on an income tax filing portal you visit the site update your date of birth and click the submit button after submitting the new date of birth an http request is sent to the server where the data is stored this http request includes the header url method and message body the header has the details of the sender sender's communication preferences and so on the url specifies what to access like wikipedia.com or google.com in this case the url must point to the server that holds the user data the method tells the server what action to perform such as post or get since we are updating information on the server we use the post method if we simply want to retrieve data like accessing my youtube channel we use the get method the method helps the server understand whether client want to fetch update or create data the message body can be empty or contain data in this case since we are requesting an update to the date of birth we need to send the new date of birth in the message body this is how an http request works when a request is made we receive a response if the server successfully updates the date of birth it sends a response confirming the update this is called an http response similarly if we request my youtube channel the server will return my channel's videos that is also an http response i hope i have explained these terms well please like and continue watching to understand what happens when you type google.com when you type www.google.com or any url into your browser the browser queries a dns server to find the ip address of the server hosting the website once it gets the ip address it establishes a tcp connection with the server after the connection is established the browser sends an http request to fetch the specific web page in this response the server processes the request and sends back an http response containing the requested data finally the browser processes and renders the response displaying the web page to the user this is an overall flow and you can explain the same to the interviewer with this diagram it was 1 minute explanation here is a 2 minute explanation which will be useful if you are asked to explain things in details instead of typing a url like this you can type ip address corresponding to google.com and can access the website but in day to day life we don't do this because it's hard for humans to remember the ip addresses of so many websites we better prefer the name however it increases the job of the browser as it needs to find the ip address the dns server contains the mapping of a website to the corresponding ip address but the browser doesn't jump to the dns server directly so when you type google.com or any url in the browser and hit enter the browser checks the browser cache for the dns records if it doesn't find the ip then the browser makes a system call to the operating system of the computer to get the ip address as operating system also maintains the os cache if the browser fails to get the ip here then it reaches out to the router as the router maintains its own cache of dns records if it is not here then the browser will move to the internet service provider server as internet service provider has its own cache of dns records as well as its own dns server if ip is not found here as well then this dns server will make a dns query to search multiple dns servers over the internet this search is recursive in nature as the search will continue from one dns server to another dns server till it either get the ip or return a response of not being able to find it after obtaining the ip address the browser establishes a tcp connection with the server for communication purposes although udp connection is also possible it is not needed in this context as real time data is not required on establishing the tcp connection the browser sends the http request to the server to perform some action like getting website data or updating some info on the server in this case where you are typing any url the browser will make a get http request to get the website now a server handles the request by doing the task that is being asked and sends back an http response to the browser in this case the server will send the web pages that include html css and data such as photos videos and more then the browser takes that html content and displays it so that users like us can see and interact with it that's all about this interview question please like share and subscribe for more such amazing content thank you